Hi everyone, welcome to our session on fun summer reading, resources and the latest books. I'm Kelly Day and I am Lake Orion's 6 through 12 instructional coach. Through this presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about ways you can encourage and support your tween and teen readers this summer. And then I also have some new and engaging recommendations for print, audio, and digital books. First and foremost, summer reading is about reading for pleasure. So don't worry about um, asking your child to keep a reading log or to um, answer study questions, um, just let them get absorbed in a book. The most important thing to do is to make sure that your reader has choice. So think about books as easy reading, just write books, and a bit of a challenge. It's totally okay with summer reading for your child to get absorbed in some easy reading books. They're reading, they're building good reading habits. Um, they're interested in the reading, they're engaged in the reading. So those easy reading books are okay. Um, but you could also push them towards or help them find some just right books, some books that you feel are right at their level. Um, but if your child is interested in, in a bit more of a challenge, um, that's fine too. Encourage them to read up a little bit. Um, a great opportunity with books that are a bit of a challenge is you could read alongside them or you can, um, they can read the paper book and also listen to the audio book while they read. Remember to be a reading role model. If you're gonna encourage your child to read for pleasure in the summer, then model those, um, model that expectation for yourself as well. Um, and I'm not saying you need to sit down and read your book for an hour every night, but you know, maybe um, after dinner, you take 20 minutes um, and you read right alongside your child uh, to help them build those healthy reading habits. Also encourage a variety of reading mediums. Um, think about you know, access to print books that you have, access to digital books, eBooks through Kindle or through the library. Um, access to audiobooks, um, think about uh, graphic novels, books written in verse, um, nonfiction, fiction, give and encourage um, variety of reading mediums. Okay, so on to the fun stuff. Um, these are some books that um, I've either read or I've gotten recommendations from um, teachers and students as of late. Um, most of them have been published in um, the last year. Um, some are have been published in the last two years, and I just feel like they're worth mentioning. So um, starting off with middle school, um, I tried to grab a variety here of both maybe some historical fiction, some realistic fiction, some fantasy fiction um, to try and give you a variety for your readers. Alan Gratz is an author who has published numerous historical fiction books. Um, one of his more recent popular ones is Refugee. Um, you may be familiar with that, um, but Ground Zero is his brand new book. And Ground Zero has two different narrators. The first narrator is Brandon, and he's visiting his dad at work on the 107th floor of the World Trade Center on September 11th, 2001. And so he is faced with this life and death situation, and can he survive and escape? 18 years later, 11-year-old Rashmina is living in a very small, remote Afghan village, and she sees her country and family devastated by the Taliban and the U.S. military, despite both armies' claims of protections. Their lives interweave in a kind of a fateful encounter that challenges America's policies, as well as its presence in Afghanistan, and puts a human face on the resulting suffering. So um, definitely a tough subject matter. Um, I think that Ground Zero offers a really cool opportunity though for some conversations if read alongside your child, um, because of the fact that it goes back to that fateful day in 2001, and then also brings it up more to the present in 2018. 
from the desk of Zoe Washington. Zoe is um, struggles with the fact that her dad, uh, she's never met him. He has been imprisoned um, since she was a baby and she hasn't heard from him until a letter arrives on her 12th birthday. And he's in prison for a crime he says he never committed. And she really wonders, could he be innocent? So she is determined to uncover the truth, even if it means hiding his letters and her investigation from the rest of her family. Uh, we dream of space. If you have a reader that is really into stranger things, um, we dream of space might be appealing. Uh, it takes the reader back to 1986 um, as the country waits for the launch of the space shuttle Challenger. Um, it's got a variety of characters in it, uh, young characters that all struggle with their own personal anxieties. Cash is a character who loves basketball, but has recently broken his wrist and is in danger of failing seventh grade for the second time. Fitch spends every afternoon playing Major Havoc at the arcade on Main and wrestles with an explosive temper that he doesn't understand. And Bird is his 12-year-old twin who dreams of being NASA's first female shuttle commander, but she feels like she's disappearing. Um, so a kind of a, a, a variety of characters in there takes us back to the 80s um, surrounding, you know, everything that's going on with space exploration. Pippa Park raises her game. Uh, Pippa Park is a student who ends up in, um, she gets like kind of a mysterious basketball scholarship to a private school and she jumps at the chance to reinvent herself. At school, she deals with, you know, very common issues um, that middle schoolers deal with. She juggles new friends, old friends, a crush, the pressure to get A's, but also being a good basketball player. Um, and then she also struggles a little bit with her family. Um, she tries to keep her family's laundry mat a secret from her um, rich new classmates. Um, but she starts to receive some hateful anonymous messages via social media um, and things kind of spiral out of control. So some very realistic issues that um, both middle school and high school students deal with, unfortunately. The Barren Grounds is my fantasy recommendation here. Um, Morgan and Eli are two indigenous children that are forced away from their families and communities but they're brought together in a foster home in Winnipeg. And they feel disconnected. They feel disconnected from their culture, from each other. They struggle to fit in until they find a secret place that's walled off in an unfinished attic bedroom and it takes them to another reality. So kind of starts off pretty realistic sounding, um, but then quickly changes over to fantasy. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of allows these kids to find themselves through a different reality. So um, my recommendations for these books for middle school um, definitely work for, for sixth and seventh grade um, and eighth grade, depending on the level of your reader. Some of the high school books that I'm going to recommend um, may also be okay for your middle school students. It just really kind of depends on um, you know, where you feel like they're at in terms of their reading level and how much of a challenge they want. Um, but also know that the high school recommendations um, may be a little bit more mature as well. All right, so my high school recommendations. My first one is Witches Steeped in Gold. Um, this is definitely more of a fantasy read. Um, it's Jamaican inspired and it's about two enemy witches who must enter into a deadly alliance in order to take down a common enemy. Uh, Kate in Waiting is Becky Albertalli's newest book. Becky Albertalli um, has written numerous books kind of around what uh, fans call the Simon verse. Um, one of them, kind of the lead on that one, is Simon versus the Homo sapiens agenda, um, which was then turned into a movie, Love Simon. And there's, there's several other books that kind of deal with those fronts. Um, Kate in Waiting is her newest one um, that goes kind of outside the Simon verse um, and involves two best friends who do everything together, including having the same crush on the long distance boy. But when he shows up at their school, their friendship is tested. Um, so realistic fiction definitely deals with a lot of um, the highs and lows of being a high school student. 
The Gilded Ones is another new fantasy book that's out. 16-year-old Deca lives in fear and anticipation of the blood ceremony that will determine whether she will become a member of her village. Already different from everyone else because of her unnatural intuition, Deca prays for red blood so she can finally feel like she belongs. Um, so, you know, kind of a, a different setting, um, but also deals with that, set, that idea of like identity and sense of belonging um, and the struggles that come with that. Game Changer is Neil Schusterman's newest book. Um, your child may be familiar with the Unwind series, um, and he's got a, a couple other series out as well. Um, but Game Changer is about Ash, who is on the football field one minute, and then suddenly he finds himself kind of hit into another dimension um, and keeps on bouncing through worlds that are almost but not really his own. The changes start small, but they quickly spiral out of control as Ash slides in universes where he has everything he's ever wanted, universes where society is stuck in the past, and universes where he finds himself looking at life through an entirely different eyes. So kind of a you know, parallel universe going on there. If you have a mystery or thriller reader, anything by Karen McManus would be great. Her newest one is called The Cousins. Um, this is a story about three cousins, Millie, Audrey, and Jonah, and they barely know each other, and they've never met their grandmother. Their grandmother was rich and reclusive, and she disinherited their parents before the cousins were born. So when they each receive a letter inviting them to work at their grandmother's island resort for the summer, they're surprised and very curious. This story definitely involves mystery, family secrets, and again, Karen McManus is an author who um, does a great job of capturing kind of that murder, thriller genre for young adults. My last recommendation um, has received a lot of press lately um, because of just the, the beautiful and wonderful story that it tells. Uh, Firekeeper's Daughter is another young adult thriller that's about a native teen who must root out the corruption in her community. It offers action, strength, community, resilience, hockey, and a fierce female protagonist. So these are some high school recommendations that I have. Again, um, they may work for um, your eighth grader as well. It just kind of depends on their reading level um, and their maturity level. Um, since these ones are definitely geared towards 9 through 12 a little bit more. So. My last round of recommendations um, are actually some nonfiction recommendations that I think offer a really fun opportunity for you and your child. Um, a trend in the last few years is that once an adult version of a nonfiction book is published, um, publishers and authors are kind of jumping on that topic and then transforming them into young adult versions or young readers editions. And so the ones that I have listed here all have adult book counterparts. Um, I think this really opens up a unique opportunity if you want to read the adult version alongside your child who might be reading the young readers edition, and then you can have those great conversations together. Um, Radium Girls, I just finished the adult version of this. And it is about radium poisoning um, with the young women who worked in factories during World War I. They painted the dials um, on, on uh, you know, uh, military instruments and watch faces. Um, and to do that, they had to kind of lick the, the paintbrush, dip it in the paint, paint the dial, lick the paintbrush again, dip it in the paint, paint the dial. Um, this was something that I didn't know anything about, um, but I thought it was a really, really interesting and definitely appeals to kids that are interested in anything from science to social justice to women's rights. Um, and the, the young adult version is, is great. The Boys in the Boat has been out for a couple years now, um, but it's a book that keeps coming up on lists and recommendations over and over and over. It's a story of a group of nine working class college students from the University of Washington who went on to compete in the crew team during the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. And again, there's an adult version as well. 
The impossible first might appeal to your child who is a bit more adventurous. Um, the author recounts his 54 day unsupported record shadowing, shattering solo crossing of Antarctica. So definitely deals with strength and resiliency, his years of training and sheer force of will. Proud is about uh, is a memoir of the author um, who competed in the 2016 Olympic Games, and she smashed barriers as the first American to compete wearing a hijab, and she made history as the first Muslim woman Muslim American woman to win a medal. But before she was an Olympian, activist, and entrepreneur, she was a young outsider trying to find her place. So this kind of takes you through her journey. Um, you know, from from youth all the way through her Olympic um, grades. Um, Lion may sound familiar because it was recently out as a movie. Um, again, though, there's also the movies based on an adult version, and then this is the young adult version of that. Um, Lion, a long way home. Um, when Saru Breeley used Google Earth to find his long lost hometown half a world away, he made global headlines. Saru had become lost on a train in India at the age of five. Not knowing the name of his family or where he was from, he survived for weeks on the streets of Kolkata before being taken into an orphanage and adopted by a couple in Australia. Despite being happy in his new family, he always wondered about his origins though. And when he was a young man, and Google Earth kind of came about, it led him to kind of pour over these satellite images looking for landmarks that he recognized. Um, and after years of searching, he found what he was looking for and then set off on a journey to find his mother. Um, again, I think that nonfiction right now is having a bit of a moment um, and gives you a really great opportunity to read alongside your child if you're reading the adult version and your child's reading the young adult version. I don't want you to forget about audiobooks and podcasts. Um, I think that uh, in the summer, you know, we're looking for something that's easy and convenient, especially in the summer. Um, and I think that audiobooks and podcasts provide that opportunity for us. They are convenient. They can help beef up a reader's reading skills by reading alongside the story and hearing the words and the names read out loud. They can allow your child to read more difficult books. And they're fun. If you can find a well done reading, it really gives the story more of a concrete sense of drama. It brings some voice to those characters. Um, I also think audiobooks and podcasts are great because, um, you know, if you're spending four hours in the car driving up north, you can put in a, a, put on an audiobook and the whole family can listen along um, or your kid can pop in their headphones and they can listen to an audiobook or a podcast while you drive. Um, so I, I like that convenience of it. Um, some, some kind of common platforms right now for audiobooks are Audible. Um, Audible you need a monthly subscription to and then you get one credit each month to get a book. Um, Chirp is one that I came across most recently. Um, there is no monthly subscription to this, and actually Chirp does some really good um, deals on audiobooks. A lot of times you can get an audiobook for $4.99 or less. And then Apple Audiobooks also has um, some great deals as well. Theirs is a monthly subscription, but I believe right now they're either running a free 30-day or 60-day trial. Um, and so, you know, you can try it out that way too. And then some podcasts that are really interesting um, and kind of hits right now with kids. Welcome to the Night Vale is kind of Twilight Zone-ish. Uh, Book Club for Kids is focused on middle schoolers talking about popular books. A lot of times there's a celebrity that reads excerpt from the books, so that'd be a great way to get some book recommendations. Radio Lab is all science-based. Stuff You Missed in History Class, name kind of speaks for itself. Youth Radio is news for and by teens. Dear Hank and John, they cover just about everything. Um, this is John and Hank Green. So John Green's the author of The Fault in Our Stars and Paper Towns. Um, and even though he's a young adult author, they kind of cover everything in terms of topics. No topics are really off limits for them. Um, and then Mental Music is all about teen mental health. 
So kind of a good variety in here of podcasts if you're looking to try those out with your, with your tween or teen as well. So kind of uh, my plug here on why we need to keep our tweens and teens reading year round. Reading 20 minutes a day can have a profound impact on a student's development. It promotes language development, brain development, it exposes us to worlds outside of our own, and it can strengthen family relationships. So just by looking at a student who reads 20 minutes a day at home, they hear 1.8 million words a year, whereas a student who only reads five minutes a day at home Here's just under 300,000 words, and a student who reads one minute a day at home only will hear 8,000 words per year. So I know it's not always easy to get a reluctant reader reading. So my tips for reluctant readers to try and encourage them to read this summer. Please allow them to follow their interests. Are they interested in soccer? Are they interested in um, art? Are they interested in music? And try and help them find books that might appeal to those interests. Try graphic novels. Um, graphic novels are also having a bit of a moment right now, not just at an elementary level, but all the way up through 12th grade. Um, and there's even some adult graphic novels that are out now. Um, but maybe try getting them interested in some graphic novels. Try and find characters who reflect your kids' experience. I think that it's important that our, our students and our children see themselves in books um, because I think it helps them to grow their own identity. I think it also helps them to kind of work through some of their own struggles if they can see a character that reflects who, who they feel they are in that moment. Again, get techie. Um, ebooks, audiobooks, podcasts, a lot of times those are very appealing to our young, or excuse me, our reluctant readers. And again, be a model and, and carve out time to read for yourself and, and be that reading role model that your kid needs. So my last little bit here are just some references and resources that you can use. Um, Orion Township Public Library, they do a really great job of curating um, children and teen books. Um, if you aren't sure what kind of books your kids are interested in reading, you can reach out to them, reach out to their teacher. Um, their teacher, um, their English teacher sees them reading every day um, and can help point you in a good direction there. The media specialists at your schools are excellent resources as well. Epic Reads is an online resource. Um, the books that are recommended there are really more geared towards high school students. Um, they do a ton of different book lists and, and you name it, they've got all sorts of recommendations. Book Riot is a website that um, has information and recommendations across all grade levels and adults. Uh, Brightly is a site that curates lists um, typically based on like theme or subject matter. Riveted by Simon Teen um, is a website that offers recommendations but also um, gives access each month to a handful of free ebooks for kids to read. And then I also have a list of book recommendations for reluctant readers that you can access by going to that tiny URL. And that's about it. Um, my hope is that um, we can keep our teens and tweens reading over the summer um, and keep them engaged in books that really pique their interest. Um, because again, summer reading is all about pleasure reading. Thanks for joining me.